Okay. So, all right. What do you want me to do? Just announcements. Well, I need to look at the bulletin, but call to worship and the prayer dedication uh, is in unison. So those are two things, definitely. After we do the uh, yeah. tithes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, sharing of joys and concerns, you can open that up with birthdays, anniversaries. Okay. But, uh, okay. All right. I could also use your help passing some things out okay. when the time comes. Um, I have I'll stay here until you tell me to leave. <laughs> um, I think that's right after the right after the prayer of dedication. So for something different. Enough or so. So yeah, you'll be right, you'll be up here. I'll be here. Okay. It'll work. I guess it's on. All right. So I'll do this, and or you could pass these out right now. Do that too. Uh, make sure that everybody everybody gets one. All right. Video's running, okay. All right. Our, uh, we welcome you here to the worship of the Lord this first Sunday of January. And uh, we are thankful for this day that the Lord has made in this new year. There is a bit of a bug going around. My wife Rhonda is home sick with a cold and uh, she, she was barking like a hound dog so much, I slept in a, a different bed. So um, anyway, uh, prayer, prayers and understanding for those uh, of your family and friends that uh, may be neighbors who, uh, who might be catching a bug. Um, there's a little bit going around. So we, uh, we have a few things different today. Sue Barson is, uh, is not here. And so uh, we're going we're gonna to do what we can musically to make it work. Uh, some of the songs I picked are a little tricky. I'm not sure if we know them. Do, not, but we have them. Well, well, we'll give it a try. If I decide to cut it after one verse, we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it, yeah, there's, there's sometimes it's a mercy, you know. It's a unplug that thing. And all, um, all the music's on the CD. Okay. There is a lead in to every song, so just look for a lead in. Very good. Well, um, are there announcements that we have? Good morning. Good morning. All right, we've got a few announcements to go over, um, get through them quickly here. I'd like to thank everybody that came to help take down all the Christmas decorations. The more, the merrier. It went a lot quicker, so thank you for that. I want to thank Clay for plowing out the driveway so nobody slipped. Um, governor's board meeting is this Tuesday, 6.30, here in the church, so everybody is welcome to come and put in their views or criticisms or comments or whatever. Um, we took all the hats and the mittens out there. We had 22 hats, 23 mittens, and four pair of socks, and these will be donated to Wilson School. So thank you for all your donations. Why would that be? Four pair of socks? <laughs> yeah, we have enough problems, Clay. We don't get any comments. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> all right. Um, now you lost me. I lost my train of thought now, so. Anything else? Any other um, announcements that anybody would like to make? No? Okay. 
All right, um, call to worship. If you could stand as you are able, we'll have our call to worship. Did I miss anything? Pardon? Do you want to do that? You want me to? You, you're doing that. Okay. But I think you took my bullet. Or my bullet thing got left up here or something. Thank you. All right, I will read the uh, dark print if you'll respond by reading the, no, no. the other way around. <laughs> I'll read the light print if you'll respond by the dark print. Let's all do it together. <laughs> Search our hearts, O Lord, and draw us closer to you through worship. May we know your presence this day. May we grow in your word, O Lord. And may we realize that you claim us as your dearly loved children. Let us worship the Lord. And our opening hymn is on 451. And please bear with us while we get the computer going. You may be seated. Birthdays and anniversaries, I don't think anybody's here. George Josie has a birthday on the 4th. Al Standen has a birthday on the 7th. They're not here. <laughs> and How many January birthdays are there? Nobody here. I, well, I'm here. Oh, you have a January birthday? It's Ten not even on. 10 days from now. All right. 10 days from now, I turn 60. And, uh, are you out of diapers yet? every gray hair of <laughs> <laughs> The older you get, the less you have to worry about. So. Sorry, let's sing happy birthday. Oh, you can't do that, though, can we? Well, you can sing it, I just can't okay. play it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who wants to start? Let's go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you, and many more. Thank you. All right. I feel a little like Ed McMahon over here with uh, Johnny Carson. At the... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I don't think we're going to go there, but <laughs> all right. Next, um, joys and concerns. Anybody have any joys and concerns? We have a silent group today. Becky. Very good. As long as you don't have to drive on it, it's beautiful, right? Okay. I got I talked to Sandra Knightley two weeks ago and haven't had the chance to announce it. I told her I would. I think you remember Sandra and Alisa Shirey. Lisa is in a home in Florida failing badly, and Sandra, her daughter, has cancer very, very bad. And when she, when I 
need prayer. Okay. You want to do a prayer for that? Any other ones? Prayers for Tom also. Anyone else? I got an update. On Thursday, I went down to state. And oh, you got one. Did I? I might have gotten one. Are you on? No, nope. I'm not. I'm muted. There you go. So Thursday, I went down to state uh, to see my surgeon, a retinal surgeon, uh, for my eye. And uh, he said it's healing wonderfully. Uh, and I told him, well, my doctor in Lansing says that I could have cataract surgery. Uh, that would correct my vision really well uh, six months after the date of my retinal surgery. And he says, you're ready now. And it's not been six months. It's probably been four months. Uh, and uh, so anyway, that was kind of good news. And he said, I could recommend you to a, to a, a surgeon because he just does retinas. He doesn't do the, the lenses. Um, so I, I'll be exploring that possibility. He said, my cataract on my right eye has progressed significantly, which they can do when you have that gas in your eye. And when they do, whenever they do surgery in your eye, it will stimulate the cataract uh, growth. But so uh, a long-term solution may be coming sooner than I thought. And that's kind of good news. But uh, that explains also why you're looking a little blurry. Uh, I keep thinking my vision's going to get better the longer I am post-surgical. And it did for a while, and then it's gotten a little fuzzy, and it, that's the cataract, apparently. So so I, I just wanted to update uh, you on that, and uh, uh, appreciate your prayers. So um, I think we're ready to pray. Let's join our hearts and minds together. Lord, we... Uh, we thank you for many blessings in life. We thank you that you always hear our prayers. We thank you that you are with us always. That you walk with us through the challenging times and you are there when we are filled with joy and are celebrating life's events. Lord, we lift up to you our prayers this day. We remember those who are sick those who are dying. We hold them in prayer before you and, and add our prayers to the prayers of others, that your spirit would use our prayers, our love to bring comfort and peace, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. May the hope of Christ's word dwell richly in the hearts and minds of, of those who need it in challenging times. Lord, we uh, give you thanks for a new year. We give you thanks for your grace that is renewed for us every day. And uh, we lift this prayer in your precious and holy name as we join together in the prayer that you've taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Yeah. Uh, well, let's just pass that by. I don't feel like I can hit that starting note very well. Uh, choir, will you come up? Bring your bulletins with you, too. <laughs> Bring your bulletins. We are here for two songs.
We're not allowing Sue to go away ever again. <laughs> the Magnificent Seven. Uh, and, Russ, you got to come back over. This, this is part two. And I am going to teach you a song, and then we are going to teach it to the congregation. Okay? And the song is on the back of your bulletin. It is, I am a promise. How many of you know this song? Anybody here? 
Oh my. <laughs> Anybody here? Well, maybe. <clears throat> we sang this a cappella at camp all the time, 45 years ago, uh, which sounds like a long time ago, but I assure you it's not. Who's going to sing the wah, wah, wah? Well, uh, <laughs> whoever wants to sing the wah 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 and and since nobody knows the song i'm going to i'm going to surprise all of you by anybody have a guess where the song came from who wrote it that's it came from the gaither group this is like bill and gloria gaithers and their family that surprised me. I didn't know that till I searched for it and found it. And uh, this is a Gaither song. It, w it, it sounds like a camp song to me. And we may have added the wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I'm not sure that's Bill and Gloria Gaither there. But, so let me sing a couple of lines, and then you, re you, re you, you repeat after me, OK? Are you ready? We're ready. I'm going to turn my mic off, because yeah. <laughs> All right. I am a promise. I am a possibility. I am a promise. With a capital P. I am a great big bundle of potentiality. Wah, 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 wah. That's, that's, you guys, I hear somebody joining in. You know this? Trying, we're trying. We're, we're trying. <laughs> okay, you got the tempo. All right, well, let, let's try that much of it. Ready? I am a promise, I am a possibility, I am a promise, with a capital P. I am a great big bundle of potentiality, wah, wah, wah. Very good. And I am really to hear God's voice, and I am trying to make the right choice. I am a promise to be anything God wants me to be. little bridge here. You can go anywhere that he wants you to go. You can be anything that he wants you to be. You can climb the high mountain. You can cross the wide sea. You are a great big promise you see. I, I am a promise. promise. I am a possibility. I am a promise. With a capital P. I am a great big bundle of Potentiality, wah, wah, wah. And I'm learning to hear God's voice, and I'm trying to make the right choice. I am a promise to be anything God wants. I am a promise to be anything God wants. I am a promise to be anything God wants me to be. Okay, are you guys ready to join in? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Share the fun. Okay. Are we ready? Are we ready? Okay. I am a promise. I am a possibility. I am a promise with a capital P. I am a great big bundle of potentiality. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And I'm learning to hear God's voice and I am trying. To make the right choice, I am a promise to be anything God wants me to be. You can go anywhere that He wants you to go. You can be anything that He wants you to be. You can climb the high mountain. You can cross the white sea. You are a great big promise, you see. I am a promise. I am a possibility. I am a promise. With a capital P, I am a great big bundle of potentiality. Wah, 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 wah. And I'm learning to hear God's voice, and I'm trying to make the right choice. I am a promise to be anything God wants. I am a promise to be anything God wants. I am a promise to be anything God wants me to be. All right. Thank Give you yourselves guys. a hand. Good job. <laughs> Good job, guys. I'd like to have a little fun in the new year. And uh, that one, 
That one seemed to fit just right for where we're going uh, with today's worship service. <laughs> so you've got to be on your toes and uh, go with the flow today. We're going to do a few things a little differently. Right now, we're going to ask the ushers to uh, help us continue our worship as we present to God our tithes and offerings. <laughs> Please stand. Yep, let's we'll stand. Uh, you know, well, let's see. Praise God from whom. Oop, that's not it. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Rick is going to lead us in the uh, unison prayer of dedication, so you'll need your bulletin to be in unison with Rick. In the bulletin, please stay standing. For the gift, the gift of, life of life that you have given, given to us, O Lord, for the unconditional love that you have blessed us with, for the, the blessing of being called dearly loved children of yours, for the, for the privilege, privilege of sharing your good news, for the, for the honor of serving you and the work of your kingdom, for the promise of everlasting life in your kingdom, for all these incredible gifts and more, we offer you our praise and our commitment. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, you may be seated. Uh, pardon? Uh, you're, you're good. You can, you can join your, your lovely wife. And, and now for something completely different. Okay. We are, uh, we are going to take the Myers-Briggs personality a type indicator it only indicates the type it doesn't indicate uh, if you're uh, a little half bubble off plum like I am uh, it, it doesn't diagnose anything it just tells you your your type and uh, it's a great great test for people to gain self-understanding to gain to help them understand their spouse or their kids better um, or their coworkers, or any number of, of folks. So we're going to share that. Uh, I've been assured that you have pencils in the pews, and so, and on the back of your bulletin, there's a score sheet at the bottom. And I need you to pay close attention for a moment. That the uh, the scores go, the scoring goes cross the line. One, two, three, four is across, not down. So make sure you uh, go across the page and not down. There are 20 short questions. Some of these questions are going to be like, do you like chocolate ice cream or strawberry ice cream? And, and for me, that's a tough choice. But make the choice as best you can. Uh, describe what, what is true for you? And uh, the first statement will be in that first blank, or the second answer is in the second answer, uh, second blank, and uh, that's how we'll proceed. Any questions? I'm sorry? It's something completely different. It, uh, there you go. 
You thought it was astigmatism, didn't you? <laughs> I thought you took care of it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, here we go. Uh, number one, would attending a large family reunion A, energize you, or B, tire you out? Just the, the first blank is, is A and the second blank is B. Okay, so you just check which one. When you uh, get a letter or email from an old friend, do you A, always accept at face value what's stated? Or B, tend to try to read between the lines a bit? I will. When you get a letter or email from an old friend, do you A, always accept at face value what's stated, or B, try to read between the lines a little bit? Number three, and, and I will, uh, we'll if you miss any, I'll come back at the end. We'll cover the space. Number three, do you tend to be A, rational and analytical, or B, thoughtful and considerate? A, rational and analytical. B, thoughtful and considerate. Number four, do you file things away in a specific place? Or B, pile things where you know you can find them? <laughs> be honest now. Number five, which is more appealing to you? A, a large party where you know some of the people, or B, a small get-together with friends? <laughs> yeah, I guess it could be either. Uh... All right, number six, when someone you know is upset, do you sometimes realize it, but usually don't know why? Or do you always know it and you often know why? Would you read it again? Yep. When someone that you know is upset, do you sometimes realize it, but don't usually know why? Or always know it and often know why? Number seven, are you more controlled by your head or your heart? N number eight, do you generally A, arrive early or always on time to an event, or do you arrive just in time or sometimes a little late? Be honest. Number nine. At a lively, spacious restaurant, would you prefer to sit in the open toward the middle of the dining room where you can see everything? Or B, off to the side or in a corner of the dining room where it's a little more private? Number ten. In picking a gift for an anonymous child, would you A, try to be practical in selecting the gift, or B, try to imagine what they might like? Number 11, rules should A, be respected and always followed, or B, be fair and flexible. Number 12. Do you tend to A, procrastinate doing things, or B, get things done and out of the way? Number 13. 
Number 13. Would you start a conversation with a stranger in a long grocery store line? A, yes, B, no. Number 14. Do you tend to try to learn all the details before making a decision? Or B, follow your hunches to guide you? Number 15. Which statement is more true for you? I am often cautious of charitable fundraising commercials. Or B, charitable fundraising commercials often break my heart. Number 16, do you prefer to A, make a decision and then move on, or B, take time to consider all the options before deciding? Number 17, when you have time alone at home, do you usually get bored or relax and enjoy it. Which statement is more true? A, facts speak for themselves, or B, there's often more to the story. Number 19. People should know there's more to marriage than being in love or be marry the person with whom they have fallen in love. Number 20. A sudden change in plans is A, a little bit unsettling, or B, a little bit exciting? Exciting. Does anybody need a, one of those, a question repeated? Got them all? Very good. Now, if you, uh, if you look on your score sheet, there, there are four columns. And at the bottom of each column, there's a space with a, a letter underneath of it. The first column is E and I. And the second column is S and N. Third column is T and F. And the fourth column is J and P. So uh, in that column that's above that letter, write the number that you were for that, for that column over top of that letter in that space above that letter. So for E, you might have uh, three, and for I, you might have two, for example. Okay. So there, there's a column. There, there are four columns on the back. And uh, at the bottom of the column, there's, there's a letter and a space. And you're going to add the column above it, those five answers. And for, the, for as many as you answered in the first column of column one, that's your E. And for whatever you answered in the second space of column one, that's your I, okay? There should be a total of five. At the bottom, uh, there, there, there are five questions for each column. Everybody okay on that? All right. Circle the letter that is the largest one for you in those four columns. So if your E is three and your I is two, circle the E. And if your S is three and your N is two, circle the S. And do that for all four columns. And that will give you four letters, uh, four, uh, four circled letters. Right? Everybody, everybody have that? Okay. So 
Did, we have uh, we've given you a handout that shows the Myers-Briggs types. And those four letters represent your type. And if you look on the sheet, you will see a, a, a brief description of your type. If my test is accurate, okay? So that's uh, my goal today is for everybody to learn their type. If you want to know more about your type, then clip off the bottom, put, put your name and your type on there, clip off the bottom, and, and, and give it to me, and I'll make sure you get a, a large profile, a detailed profile of your type. Because there's, there's a lot more to it than just that little paragraph. Okay? All right. This is uh, one of the best uh, personality uh, indicators, personality tests that there is out there. And uh, it's used in a lot of different settings. So you may have taken it already somewhere in, in your work or in your education or, or so forth. And you may already be familiar. If you are, I would be interested in knowing if, if your result today is the same as it was when you took it uh, the first time. At this time, Russ, we have a hymn, We Are the Church, verses 1 through 4. Let's stand. I am the church, you are the church. Follow Jesus all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. Thank you. You may be seated. Our scripture comes to us from 1 Corinthians 13, verses 8 through 12. Paul writes, Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there's knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. 
When I became a man, I put, a, put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall know, we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. May God bless the reading and hearing of the Holy Words of Scripture. Every week I prepare a message that I hope will draw you closer to God by helping you to understand God better or God's Word better and how it may speak to your life. That's one of the primary purposes of a sermon, to, to, help, people, to help people understand God better, understand the Christian faith better, and the mission of Christ better, so that we can grow in our practice of discipleship. That matches our overall mission to make disciples for Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. But there's another angle to Christian discipleship that's important. To be stronger disciples faithful disciples, we need to understand ourselves better too. And I believe it's possible for us to draw nearer to God and draw nearer to one another by understanding ourselves better. That's why we took the the very abbreviated version of the Myers-Briggs test today. It's intended to help us identify our type our Myers-Briggs personality type. And if you want to know more, I can provide you with much more information on it. The Myers-Briggs type indicator was was created by two American women, a mother-daughter team, Catherine Cook Briggs and her daughter Isabel Briggs Myers. They were inspired and fascinated by the work of, of a Swiss psychiatrist named Carl Jung, who uh, founded the the School of Jungian Psychology, a a major influence in the past century. Carl Jung was a a Christian man, uh, as well as a depth psychologist. The Myers-Briggs Type Indicator was published in 1956. So although it's been around for a while, people still consider it one of the the best, most easily understood personality types uh, tests out there. It measures four personality characteristics that are on a a continuum. There's uh, extrovert, strong extrovert on the end, and, and a strong introvert on the end. And then the spectrum of everything in between, that continuum. Most of us, all of us, would fall somewhere between Strong extrovert and strong introvert. It measures uh, sensing and intuition. It measures thinking and feeling. And it measures judging and perceiving. And I want to explain each of those four uh, columns briefly. The uh, extrovert introvert column. If a, if a strong extrovert went to a party, for example, where they didn't know very many people, they would be quite excited to meet new people. They would actually find the experience energizing. But if a strong introvert went to the same party where they didn't know many people, they would likely stand off to the side or in a corner with someone whom they knew and visit with that person. An introvert would also find the whole experience tiring or even exhausting. And they'd be ready to go home from the party much earlier than the extrovert. Now, I I said that the scale is on a continuum. We're all somewhere along that scale between strong extrovert and strong introvert. Introverts, you probably know, tend to be a little bit shy. But you can't always tell that uh, at face value. Some introverts 
learn to, uh, to function well in roles where uh, an extrovert would more naturally uh, operate. Uh, it is not easy to get to know an introvert because they process their feelings and their thoughts inside. And uh, it's not as easy to get to know an introvert as it is an extrovert. Here's a little bit of interesting research. 75% of the general population are extroverted. 75% are extroverts. Only 25% are introverted. But among pastors, it is reversed. 75% of all pastors are introverts. And only 25% of us are extroverts. And I find that really interesting. Perhaps people who are drawn toward the a life of quiet reflection and, and prayer more easily answer the call to ministry? Or maybe uh, they are more often the ones called by God to ordain ministry. Anyway, the next quality to be measured is, is uh, the sensing and intuitive uh, column. Sensing people add things up, often externally, they process what they see and smell and hear and taste and feel around them. And intuitive people have a gut feeling or a hunch. They, they can catch the vibe of something. They can't always tell you why they know something, but they are often correct in knowing it. If an intuitive person walked into a, a, a room, they might think, wow, uh, do you feel that? You can cut the tension with a knife. And a sensing person would walk into the same room and, and they might think, I wonder why all these people look so grumpy. Okay. The next quality is thinking and feeling. In, in what way do you process information? With your heart or with your head? People who are, are strong feelers have empathy skills. They, they understand and, and relate to others, what, what others feel. They can also at times have their own feelings hurt because they are sensitive. Thinking predominant people are often good at, at just getting things done. They don't worry about what other people think or feel. They, they understand their task and they go about it. They're Rational and, and not emotional. The fourth characteristic of Myers-Briggs is J and P, the, the judging and perceiving, and, and those words really don't describe that column very well. This column measures how you prefer to operate in your life. Uh, judging folks, sometimes we call them J's. J's are, are very well organized. They believe in the, mo the motto, there is a place for everything, and everything should be in its place. J personalities are neat and orderly. They're always early. They believe that if you're on time, you're late. They make lists, and they use those lists. They make plans, and they keep those plans. They make decisions and they get it done. They don't like it when there's no plan or when plans change. They plan their vacations with great detail. They can't stand disorder, chaos, uh, and sometimes change. The other end of the spectrum is uh, the perceiving folks. We sometimes call them peas. Peas are less structured. P's are spontaneous. They will change their plans easily if something else comes along. They're easygoing. They can go with the flow. They will take care of that later and sometimes leave behind a mess. They tend to procrastinate. 
They are either right on time or sometimes a bit late. They don't file things. They pile things. But they know where it is, or they think they do. <laughs> a P-type friend will call you up and say, what are you doing tonight? Or what are you doing right now? Want to go see a movie? Go bowling? Have a walk? Go have coffee? Lots of possibilities. A J-type friend would, would want to plan that get-together ahead of time. Let's get together next Friday from 7 to 9.30. <laughs> uh, I'll call to make reservations. Okay. P's. Love to look at all the options. They have a hard time picking a restaurant once they've decided to go out to a restaurant. P's examine all the possibilities before making the decision. J's like to make that decision and move on. When a P falls in love with a J and they get married, they're going to have some work to do to keep peace in their home. The J can feel like the P is purposely trying to annoy them and, uh, or that they, they don't care because they, they leave their drinking glass on the end table instead of taking it out to the kitchen, putting it in the dishwasher where it belongs. And the P-type is, is going to feel like, what's the big deal? It's just a drinking glass. I was going to take care of it later. You didn't have to take care of it for me. Or if this J and P couple is, is going somewhere, the J wants to be there early. So the J plans how long it will take them to get ready while the P gets distracted or preoccupied with other things, doesn't anticipate how long it's going to take to get ready, and will either get there right on time or a little late. Or never. <laughs> and that couple needs to understand each other better, or they're in for a tough time. I've done premarital counseling where I've seen those variables and, and we've worked on that because it's needed. Anyway, these four characteristics measured by the Myers-Briggs test create 16 possible personality types. 16 types that you have a handout for and can see a, a very short summary of them and you know what yours uh, may be if my test is accurate. It's important to note that the 16 types are not better or worse than one another. They are simply different. Every personality type has its strengths, things that they do very well, and every personality type has weaknesses, things that they don't do very well. Knowing your personality type can help you understand uh, what you are good at and why can also help you understand why there are some things that you don't like to do or may not be as good at. And it's not just you. Personality, knowing personality types can help you understand your spouse a lot better. It can help you understand your children better, your coworkers better, your, your neighbor, even your pastor. <laughs> Hopefully, today you will leave here knowing your type and knowing that uh, you can learn a lot more about your type and others uh, if you'd like to. I can provide that. It's useful information. It can also help you know uh, how you can connect to God better. The people who have uh, done research in, My in Myers-Briggs have, have uh, looked at what types uh, respond best to, to certain spiritual disciplines than others. Some people grow in their faith through, through studies, through reading or taking a class. Some people grow in their faith through fellowship. 
by being with others. Some people grow in their faith through quiet time and and having daily devotions and prayer. Some people grow in their faith through service, volunteerism, helping others, going on mission trips. Some people are good at teaching others, and some people would rather work with computers because people are too difficult to deal with. They like computers, they like numbers. God has given us different qualities, different personalities, because it is needed. We need diversity. It's a strength. We need those who who have a heart for peace and justice. We need those who have a passion for evangelism and faith sharing. We need those who can relate to technology and numbers and finances. We need those who can relate to people and their feelings and their needs. God has made the body of Christ diverse. The different parts of the body of Christ have have different roles, different things they're good at. God has also made people unique because God is creative. God doesn't need for us to be cookie-cutter Christians. Stamped out, we're all alike. God doesn't need for us to, to look alike or sound alike or act alike or think alike or feel alike. And too often, churches expect conformity. Their attitude is, if you want to join this church, you need to look and act like us. We're respectable people. And too seldom churches have failed to uh, appreciate diversity. What unique qualities does this person bring to our church? The French have a saying, Viva la différence. Long live the differences. It's an affirmation of diversity. Anyway, a few takeaways for today. Each of us, both male and female, have been created in the image and likeness of God. That's what the Bible says in Genesis. A careful reading. God has purposefully made us unique with special qualities, gifts, strengths, and perspectives. We need to respect the uniquenesses of others and appreciate and learn to appreciate them as dearly loved children of God. Each of us can gain better self-understanding through knowing who God created us to be. Each of us can gain insight into those around us, those closest to us, and thereby be more accepting, affirming, appreciative, and more loving. All of us are still learning and growing in our understanding of God and of, our, of ourselves. It is a lifelong adventure. Someday, when we all get to heaven, as the hymn goes, perhaps we'll have all the answers. Or maybe we'll just learn to live with the mysteries with greater appreciation and reverence for the one who created us and created the mysteries. Until then, there's much to learn about ourselves, about others, and about God. Paul writes, for now we see only a reflection, as in a mirror. Some translations say, in a mirror dimly. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known, says Paul. God knows us fully. God knows us better than we know ourselves, and God loves us fully and forever. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our closing hymn is Many Gifts, One Spirit. Let's stand. Yes.
your love casts out our fear. And he gives one spirit, one love coat in many ways. In our differences, from diversity you praise one giver, one Lord, one spirit, one word. As we leave here together, as we leave here together, let us go forth in God's love, which is steadfast and everlasting. Let us remember that we go forth in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. His mercies are new for us every day. And let us remember that we go forth with God with us, always and everywhere. Thanks be to God. Amen.
There's no way of changing that. Well, it's 